And then the next thing we're going to do is continue on in the trend of adding more of these little tendril type things all around. Uh, so at this point you're just using two brushes. You're using one to add the color and then you're using the other brush to soften it with just using some water at the tip of it. So keep that in mind and uh, we'll continue. So if you want to add different variations of the green, um, by all means I suggest adding some brown, mixing some brown to your green if you must. Uh, and get some nicer, warmer greens. Um, we'll do a couple of ones that are kind of like that as well and kind of like this because I really love how they kind of bend and go in different directions and shapes. So I'm going to do one over here. And again, this is where it takes a lot of practice to kind of really get your... Um, bearings when it comes to these really loosey um, stems. It's a problem area for me. I know a couple of you have even mentioned it um, via messaging on Instagram and stuff to me. So I know it's quite popular, but the more you practice, the better it gets. So I've taken my squirrel mop brush, I've taken a very light color of the pink, and I'm just adding a couple of strokes to create a very simple and light floral here. And then again, I'm just going to use this brush to sweep down the color so it isn't too bright. And it's a nice light floral. Um, then we kind of move on and we're going to kind of continue creating um, a few more things that are kind of leafy in nature so a lot of like different stems and just kind of leave it hanging uh, a lot of them just have protrusions from it and not much else so you could kind of just leave it at that uh, and you just do multiples at a time if you wish like I'm just going to do another one here and I'm just adding a couple of like very loosey lines or tendrils you can call it extending from it um, we'll do some over here as well and these ones will have some nice little buds at the end of it leave some white space I'm making these buds like really long protrude uh, oval shaped almost and let's let's give another one kind of over here uh, since I have this stem this way I'll just do it this way so I love these little bends and stuff that don't look like your your regular norm for florals or just leaves and I think this is the appeal of um, the wildflowers they just have some really cute shapes and they're all pretty thin and they're all very light in nature. So this is how it's different from your bigger blooms that we've been doing, like the like the roses and the peonies and stuff like that. Um, so learning new things and learning to appreciate the beauty in nature. There's so many different variations to things. Um, what else can we do? I just want to tie these red ones in up as I mentioned previously. What I'm going to do is I will use my mop brush and just having water on it I'm going to get a slight amount of green on here as well and I'm just going to add some green. Well this doesn't look like green it looks more like a brown. So that's okay. I'm just going to mix up some of the brown on here, adding green to it. And what I want this to look like is just more greenery in between these bigger florals because I don't want to add too much detail like I have been. <clears throat> and I'm just going to extend this to kind of go 
in between the big blooms that I have painted on here. So it looks like there's like almost like a green abyss happening and it's extending and I'm literally just dabbing away at this. And because there's more brown in there, I'm just going to lightly dab on there so I don't have it drying up as too much of a brown version, okay? So there we go, I just want it to be super light. And now using this, I'm gonna go back inside and add some green detail. And by green detail, I mean things like your regular stuff that we've been doing. And it'll bunch up in clamp, in cl clumps of water is what I wanted to say, but not necessarily. It's only in areas that are going to be damp that it would clump up that way. Uh, but I want it to be light and faint and fading almost so it doesn't look too much like a part of the other greens that are happening. And I'm just trying to create some sort of differentiation between these inner greens and the outer greens happening here. And you can do that by adding a little darker green to your areas or just even like I did, like I added a wash of green and then went in with these greens so that it would flare out and spread out. So you have hints of what these are, which is obviously green leaves, but you're not quite getting full detail if that makes sense. And that is nice, at least to me. So now I'm just dabbing a little bit of extra green and I'm just gonna fade it off with like, almost making it seem like there is some slight little green um, leaves. These remind me of, what is that, dill, yes. These little grassy things remind me of dill. So something like that. I'm just kind of fading it off with that. And uh, yeah. So while we have detail for these, we don't want to have too much detail so it doesn't look too... Um, takes away from our whole um, watercolor loose effect, right? So we want to keep that as loosey as we can. But I'm just adding while this is still down, just adding slight darker greens to this area so it stands out a tad bit more than the other areas. And again, that's because we're not giving too much detail in here, so. All right, so I'm gonna leave that as that and continue on with the rest of it. So I, there's really not much else that we really need to do, but we can, I'll do a couple of those over here uh, or even over here. And then, uh, yeah, so like I will just extend having it going this way. And then exactly how I showed you guys previously, I'm doing a couple of tendrils from it. And I'm very loosely adding these in. And then I'm going in with my mop, sorry, not mop, my, uh, my squirrel mop brush, uh, squirrel mop brush, my silver black velvet, and I'm just softening the edges, adding a couple of dots. Uh, and by dots, I mean just little dabs of water. And this is just to indicate additional greenery. And like I've been repeating myself over and over again, um, this is just to show that looser feel that we can have with these here without looking too, too much detail. So I love how this has turned out. I don't know if you guys saw it because I think maybe it was a tad bit out of range. 
I'm going to pull it down some more so you can see me do that again. Um, and this time I will do it, let's do one at the bottom here. Um, now let's just do one over here in this direction. Yeah. And uh, this one can be a little bit like that. And that's what I love about these, that they're just so flowy in nature and literally I could just do these and leave it like that so you know what for this one let me do that let me just leave it like this and I'll just add a little bit of water to the tapering edge here um, just to keep consistent with the method because I you didn't see quite well what was happening up there I'm going to show it to you again. Here we go. I'm just adding water in the areas where I added extra green. And this pulls from the green and adds a nice soft effect. And then I'm just fading off the green by adding dabs using that same water. All right, so that's how we ended that. Um, and then lastly, Let's see, so this is what we have. And while I really, really like how this is happening here, I feel like we could do with, with some more of the pink on this area here. Um, and maybe even more of the little dill type stuff that we have happening, just to kind of make it seem a little fuller not as much so I'm just adding some of that dill stuff and again you're using just the tip and you're using just making a couple of like lines protruding and you can go lighter too if you want you, it doesn't have to be this same amount of green as we've been using for the other ones and then just kind of let that go um, yeah, so this one over here, we said, I'm going to do another one of the pinks, uh, and so I'm just adding a line there, adding my green bottom, and I'm going to take, uh, let's take, take my squirrel mop brush, I'm just going to get some of that orangey pink color and add a couple of strokes yeah so literally just like that and then I'm just pushing down some of the color to the green so I can get it nice and light and it's not too overpowering and that's good enough for me too. Adding another one here and this time I'm just gonna add just like a bud almost looks like a bud and then leave it at that and possibly adding a couple of these variations in other places too just to kind of give it give it a little detail but not too much detail so sweeping that down and that takes care of the green seeping into that purple oh, sorry the orange um, what else um, I think these are pretty good the way they are I did mention adding some brown variations and so for that I'm just going to take some of the brown from my brown that I have mixed I'm just taking the brown mixing it at the side of the greens where I have everything laid out and I'm just going to do a couple of different twig type um, extensions and I'm having some of them be darker and I want to be just like skimming the paper 
with it, not really doing too much application of brown. And then once I have that, I will just go in and get either the pink or the purple or, you know what, let's do the purple. I'm going to do the purple mauve that I have and I'm just going to add a couple of different strokes. Just adding some very basic simple strokes to these. Not a lot of detail again, just sporadic here and there. And then dipping it in water so that I can get a nicer, softer feel for these strokes. And I don't want it to be too, too detailed again, so I don't want to have this spreading out all over. So I'm going to try and have it tapering off in the edges. Something like that. And then again, I'm doing the same method somewhere else just so we can have a consistent effect. Um, Let's do it. Let's do it here. And again, I'm going in with the, can't remember which brush I used. This one with my purple. And then just using the squirrel mop or any of the brushes. I'm fluctuating between all my brushes to kind of blend because I don't want to lose that time slot of when it is damp to kind of get that nice blending effect. And then you can just dab it away because you don't want it. I, don't, I just want it to be really light. Uh, it's lighter than this one, but again, the color is so close to the pink that I didn't want it to be overpowering. So that's why I did that there. And then we'll, let's just do it in one last place and then we can kind of say that that's an evened out application. Yeah, let's just do it here. And was I using this one? Yes, I was. Adding some of that purple. Move. And then going in with the squirrel mop, I'm just going to add water droplets to soften things up all right and there we go so this is what we have and I am quite pleased with it uh, we could totally go ahead and add some more of the kind of uh, florals that I did from this tutorial here I ended up not doing any of them actually we ended up doing a whole bunch of new ones but that's fine you can kind of go in and add some of these if you wish and uh, yeah hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial so sorry again for the issues with streaming earlier I hope next Sunday will be a whole lot better but thanks so much for watching guys and um, let me know in the comments what you guys thought if you like these versions of loose florals I personally enjoy them a lot uh, love hearing from you guys. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Show me your work. I love seeing it. And um, again, if you find that these are helpful, please do share them in your social media circles. It helps my channel grow as well. So thanks so much, guys, and we'll chat soon. Happy Sunday. Bye.